All right, so I founded Physiology in 2009. I come out of an advertising agency background, uh, agency here in Indianapolis where I was, at first I was running accounts for Chase and for Microsoft and then um, decided that wasn't going to be my path, so I started a media and analytics department. Um, in 2009, we were running a big campaign where a video went viral at the time, which meant something very different than it means today. And we noticed, uh, my partner and I noticed that uh, the uh, video was a Twitter trending topic. And in 2009, Twitter was really a baby. Nobody really knew what it was. And, you know, found ourselves asking all these questions of the social media agencies of, what is a trending topic? What's the volume? Who's talking? What does this mean? How do you contextualize it? And um, we had a real light bulb moment that nobody could answer that question. And this was going to continue to be a question and that question was going to evolve. So um, we started Physiology October 2009 and quickly uh, spun it out as its own company. So early in, um, early in the process of starting Physiology, growing the company, we're a, we're a social media research firm. We service the entertainment industry. So we're working with all these big studios and talent, directors, producers, television networks. Um, it's really fun work and it's also really intense work. And we, um, in the beginning, would uh, we'd hire people and probably not train them properly. We never really established our culture. We had a little bit of turnover in our early days of the company. And um, I really, I blame Ben and myself for all of that turnover. And, and we realized that uh, if we did not establish our culture of our company, our employees were gonna establish it for us. So we really stopped down and thought about who are we? What do we stand for? You know, we knew what we stood for in Los Angeles. We didn't know what we stood for here at home with our staff. Um, so we started with our mission statement, our vision, our values and expectations. What what are the behaviors that we expect of everyone? Uh, and and kind of kept rolling from there. We really uh, we blew up our benefits and said, you know, we have a. Um, an accountability policy, not a vacation policy. You take what you need when you need it. Um, you know, if you need to work from home, that's great. Just be accountable to management, to each other, and to your clients. And out of all of our thinking about how we could creatively manage a staff of millennials, um, <laughs> we came up with the FYI trip. Mm -hmm. So the FYI program, um, kind of the birth of the idea Ben and I were uh, on a long drive back from Nashville visiting a client to Indianapolis. And we talked about how our travel has always provided points of inspiration for us, uh, especially being a company based in Indianapolis. You can really get sucked into the day-to-day -day of working in a cubicle and you know, a remote location away from everybody else. So we come back energized when we're on studio lots or you know, we're working with you know, clients in Nashville, New York, LA, and love the energy that we can gather from all of this travel. But our employees don't always have that opportunity. So in lieu of that, they're asking for client travel. They wanna go see our clients, they want face-to-face -face meetings, and not everybody's ready for that, um, especially at the, at the levels that we're working at uh, in these organizations. So um, we found ourselves turning people down for, for traveling. Um, they were asking to go to conferences, like I really need to go to Vegas for this $5,000 conference that's not gonna be useful and it just wasn't a good idea. So we wanted to kind of normalize and give everyone some kind of opportunity <clears throat> to experience something different. Uh, so we came up with the idea of the Find Your Inspiration trip, uh, FYI trip, and what it is is uh, it's a non-meeting work trip. So each employee, after they've been with us for 12 months, they get a $1,500 stipend to travel anywhere in the world they want. If they spend more than that, it's on them, that's fine. Um, and uh, they can travel anywhere, but it's not to take meetings. So it's not to fly to LA and meet with our studio clients. It's not to go with your boyfriend to Philly because you have to go to a wedding. Uh, it's meant to be solo travel. Um, in some cases, we've allowed people to travel together if they're just not comfortable going solo. Mm -hmm. Um, solo travel, somewhere that's going to inspire you in the work that you do. Uh, 
We are wrapping up our second year of the FYI trip. Um, the first year was phenomenal. Uh, you know, people came to us with the presentation of here's why I want to go to this location. Uh, here's what it means to me. Here's why I believe it would inspire me in what I do. And they have to have all the logistics worked out. I'm going to work at this week, this co workspace or um, from my Airbnb. Here's how I know I'm going to have Wi Fi if they're somewhere remote, things like that. Um, and it, it's meant to be during the work week and they can tack on vacation before or after if they want. Um, first year, everyone played by the rules. Second year, we've seen a little bit of, we, we've had to redirect people a bit more. Um, you, you know, I think it's easy for people to um, get away from the heart of what the find your inspiration means. Uh, and just want to go somewhere really cool for a vacation. Mm -hmm. So we are um, just making sure that we're putting the right guardrails on that. And part of that is when they come back, it's a presentation to the staff. What is it that I gained from this experience? You know, how am I inspired in a different way mm -hmm. to do the job that I do? Um, and those have been amazing presentations, uh, often very emotional presentations. It's been it's been really nice. So. I don't think we've really had challenges, but we've had to uh, continuously remind people what the purpose of this is. We've gotten a lot of value out of this experience. Um, we have very little turnover, and you know, I I'm not saying that's solely based on FYI. It's a really nice hook to talk about. It's a good um, it's a good you know, discussion point during an interview, uh, if someone is looking at another company. Um, you know, I think it has helped with retention, but it's, it's just part of the whole. And part of that whole means that we are thinking about our employees uh, holistically. We're thinking about keeping them inspired, not burning them out, making sure that they can live the lives that they need to live, and work is just a part of that. So, um, you know, it's, it's been very beneficial, but, um, you know, if we let all of the other pieces of our culture fall, then FYI wouldn't, mm -hmm. wouldn't just hold us up. We have 26 employees currently, um, and 100% of our employees have taken their trip. Yet yeah, we have had very, um, very heartfelt, very meaningful feedback from all of our employees who have taken an FYI trip. Uh, a lot of times it's um, even the aspect of traveling alone, spending time by yourself and really getting into your work away from everyone else has uh, been eye-opening to them. It's made them think about what is my purpose in this company? Where am I going? Um, you know, it, a lot of gratitude for just giving them an opportunity to go somewhere that they've never been before. So we, um, we have the benefit of being a small company and rolling it out amongst a small and young company. Um, we also have the benefit of having younger people who have not had a lot of experience in other companies before. 85% of my staff, I believe, is under 30. Mm -hmm. So that, that's certainly different than a lot of companies who uh, would be considering this kind of thing. Um, you know, the, the fee, the $1,500, I've done research since we implemented this, and there are other companies that give $5,000 stipends but for um, sabbaticals or for travel, you know, way down the road. We were a bootstrap company. We didn't have all that, all that funding to be able to do that, but I think that the $1,500 is just as meaningful. Um, we, uh, we definitely believe it's more meaningful than just giving them a check for $1,500. Mm -hmm. um, so when we roll something out like this uh, company-wide, it's, uh, it's been adopted very well, but we've always provided our purpose. You know, why are we making a change? And, and maybe not so much with the FYI trip, because that's a benefit that I don't think anybody could be upset about, mm -hmm. but um, you know, if you roll out a no vacation policy, well, you have to consider everyone in the organization and how they're going to respond to it. Because what if you have someone who's been there for years and they've accrued time or, you know, the travel or um, vacation time has been a reward? Well, for those people who've been there a long time, you know, how, are, how is that going to impact them if now Joe, who was hired yesterday, gets the same amount of vacation time as you? So, um, you know, when we think about these things, we think about, uh, we have to think about all levels within the organization, all departments, 
you know, what's going to be, what's going to be the good, the bad, and the ugly, and then formulate how we're going to communicate it to everyone. Um, I would, I would ask about your culture. I would ask about your people, and I would see how well you can define who your people are, what they believe about your organization, um, what makes them loyal. What are you doing to make sure that they have a good quality of life, that they consider work to be just one of the elements of their you know, full and robust life? Um, and if, if you're not considering that at all, then I think there are other places to start <laughs> before the FYI trip. Um, you know, There are a lot of steps that you need to take to get to that place. Um, from a budget perspective, I have, I, I would imagine, I haven't calculated, but I would imagine we have had less travel from everyone you know we we've not sent some people out to see clients who aren't client facing whereas we would have felt inclined to do so before mm -hmm. so we haven't felt uh, a financial hit from this necessarily we don't really consider most conferences anymore whereas we used to have to field those conversations a lot so you know i think that there's certainly a financial return and loyalty uh, you know we have next to no turnover we've not had an employee actively leave us and Four years. So we have found as a small and growing company that um, transparency is, is number one for Ben and I. Um, we need to inform our employees of what we're doing, how we're doing, why we're doing, um, all the time, you know, and, and it's probably uncomfortable for other CEOs to do the same. And there are reasons not to be very transparent. But, you know, for example, we just went through an acquisition in August and we were 18 months into processes with uh, fielding inbound uh, leads of people who wanted to buy us. And when Ben and I are in our office, heads down, stressed out, can't get to the work that our employees want us to get to, I want them to know why. You know, I don't want them worried while the company's going under or they don't like me or I upset them. They need to know why we're stressed. They need to know why we're unavailable. And they, uh, in return, are very respectful of that fact. So, you know, whenever we roll out something new, we, we've gone through a few reorgs where we've taken people from this department and put them over there. That could be detrimental, but we did it based on feedback that we heard from multiple employees about what is best for that individual. And when we make those changes, we inform everybody. You know, we don't just have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with that person and their director. We make sure everybody understands what we're doing, why we're doing it, and also that we're open to their feedback and that if this doesn't ultimately work out, we want you to tell us. You know, we use different tools for communicating with each other. We're in four different cities, so it's really important that we stay connected. We use Slack, which is hilarious. It's, it's highly efficient. It's highly effective. It's also hilarious on some days when people just get on a roll with each other. Um, but we use that uh, as an open forum, too, so people can provide feedback at any given time. Um, and we want creative ideas and brainstorms for our clients. We want those ideas to come from anyone in the company. And that's, our, that's part of our day one speech that we give to people, no matter if you just graduated college yesterday or you've been with us for five or six years your opinion matters and your ideas matter and ultimately you know if it's good it'll go to the client so we um you know we make sure that everyone feels like they can have an impact first of all what is your culture can you define it because if you can't define it then i imagine nobody else can define it the way that you would want it to be defined um, secondly are you considering people as individuals i don't think that it's possible to develop a vision for your culture or a vision for your company without really understanding where everyone is. And that's in terms, I mean, that can be as simple as anonymous surveys just to get feedback about how people feel about the organization. Um, it can be, we do career development plans where this gives people a written forum to write down all their hopes and dreams. And, you know, where are you succeeding? Where are you, where are you not? working as well as you should. Um, what is your future in three years, whether you're with us or you're not, what do you see yourself doing? And, and it gives them a form to kind of dream and build an action plan for it. Um, you know, that it has to start with the individuals. And, and I've seen time and time again when 
Um, the company at the company level tries to enforce a culture or enforce ideas, mm -hmm. it always falls flat. It has to come from, from your people up. Okay. The use of working with Advisa and the use of predictive index has been, um, it has been a tremendous help in uh, understanding how to manage a team. I started using predictive index before I started physiology, or right around the same time, I guess. Um, and I had no idea how to build a team. I had no idea how to create a culture, how to manage to an individual. Uh, before then, I managed to what Jen thinks you need to do, and that never works. Um, so it has been incredibly useful um, for, uh, for all of us who, who use it in the company.